So again, welcome everyone, uh, Reverend Tamara. And I just I didn't say earlier hello to all my Zoom people on there. Sorry, <laughs> I forgot to do that earlier. So we, we appreciate that you're here with us as well. So today my topic is don't go back to sleep. <laughs> I know, right? For Easter, Diane did a beautiful mes- meditation on the resurrection. And uh, how easy is it? I was joking with my husband this morning. I said, he was kind of beating himself about up about something. And I said, don't put yourself on the cruci- tr- crucif- don't crucify yourself today. It's Easter. <laughs> it's time to re- be reborn and to look at it. And he looked at me like, oh my goodness, Tamara. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'll try not to do that. I said, good. But it's it's this springtime, this renewal, this time of birthing what is to come next. And how exciting. We just had our annual general meeting. We've got some new board members on. And actually, am I, I'm just going to surprise everybody. I've got a new board member who jumped on today only with Chris, lovely Christine Meeks, who's going to help us out as well as um, Norm is going to be stepping off for the time right now. So what a seamless transition. Again, one mind, so we're so fortunate. I just wanted to take a minute, though, and acknowledge today the, the National Transgender Day because it's a day of visibility, and it is an event dedicated to recognize the resilience and accomplishments of trans, the transgender community. And on this day, we celebrate the trans people among us, raise awareness about the struggles they face, and advocate for more protected rights for them in a bid to reform society and empower. So I think that is really, it's something newer for me that I've been learning about. And I think it's really important that we're aware. And that is today, don't go back to sleep. So let's be aware about different genders, different people in this world. And what I liked is um, Dr. Edward Vilhune said, our teaching is one of oneness and wholeness. It creates the moral compass and a welcoming environment that affirms transgender people as exquisitely individualized expressions of divinity and celebrates their contributions to society. How beautifully said is that? He's a... He's a powerful teacher, that Dr. Edward. (laughs) So for the last few, just transitioning now, the last few weeks we've been talking about when I came back, the need to let go and not figure things out and to trust our inner guidance. And then last week we talked about that... um, that guidance leads us into new territory and grounded in the truth of who we are and our visions of who we are and letting them inform every thought, word, and action. And this week, when we're talking about let's not go back to to sleep, it reminds that this, this journey is not a destination. The work goes on. The practice deepens. We set an intention to stay conscious and live from love and continue to embrace the infinite possibility. The infinite possibility. So how do we how do we do that? So I think we take the words, I'm gonna start with our um, from Rumi. And what he Rumi says is the breeze at dawn has secrets to tell you. Don't go back to sleep. You must ask for what you really want. Don't go back to sleep. People are going back and forth across the door sill where the two worlds touch. The door is round and open. Don't go back to sleep. So when we think about that today on this day of Easter and not going back to sleep, you know, where, how can we do that? What are, what are this teaching teaches us to step into spiritual practice? to step into this community and to live in a way that emboldens us, that gets us moving forward. Because our life is ever unfolding of spirit's perfect pattern. And it requires, the world requires each of our consciousness to move forward. So even that fabled state of happily ever after necessitates us, oh gosh, sorry, my tongue is still getting in the way of my tooth, I tell you, 
Yeah. <laughs> ah. So the attention and the intention, because have you noticed we're not quite there yet. The work goes on and the practice deepens. We set an intention to stay conscious, live from love, and continue to embrace infinite possibility. Let's not go back to sleep. And how I'm thinking of this is that it's through that age old, you've heard Terry say the joke when he's like, get it in the cab and he says, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? And the, the cab driver turns around and says, practice, practice, practice. <laughs> Right? But if we expand that old joke into, stay, into how do we stay at Carnegie Hall? So having tasted the truth of who we are, how do we anchor ourselves in it? And how do we express through, have the divine express through us, as us, and in us? So it's that renewed dedication to the practice that allowed our initial waking to be the obvious tool for grounding us in the path. And I know this week, whoops, I forgot my book up here, that I really, I had a meeting on Friday and I was wondering why my anxiety level was up and what was going on with it. And I realized this week I'd fallen out of practice. I had fallen out of my spiritual practice. I wasn't doing my morning meditation when I did. I, don't, I just let my life kind of start running me. I don't know if that makes sense. Instead of me running my own life and taking charge and knowing that that self-care, that piece of me, that's so important. So it was like, oh. And I was sharing it with uh, my coach, and she said, well, that's an interesting topic to talk about on your Sunday. <laughs> practice, practice, practice. And the very word practice invites misunderstanding what would you practice except that which you already know? And what do you know except maybe gear, guilt, fear, and attack? This is Love Without Conditions from Paul Farini. But what I like he says about this is when, so even though you might not know what to practice, he says start small. Start with just your awareness about what is going on in your life. So be aware, what is showing up in that mirror for me today? And if you're feeling angry or depressed, simply ask, why? Why am I angry? Or what's going on? What's coming up for me? And maybe it's even that need to defend ourselves. When I, I know I get angry sometimes and it happens. <laughs> and, but it's a good question to remind, what is underneath that? What am I afraid of right now? because fear isn't my first go-to. So if I'm afraid of something, it's taking that time to ask myself and to get in touch with that divine source within and remember that truth of who I am. So just, just he talks about asking ourselves and just taking small baby steps every time to get into reaffirming who we truly are. And that's what I think of prayer. Prayer for me is reaffirming, reaffirming the I am. I am divine source. I am divine inspiration. I am love expressed in this world. Whatever it is that helps you, those affirmations, and that is what prayer is about. So the 40 days that Jill mentioned earlier, the 40 days of prayer, why I chose 40 days, which is a lot of days, <laughs> I know that, but the number 40 holds profound metaphysical significance across various spiritual and religious contexts. So it's 40 days in the Bible, right? Um, Moses wandered through the devil, uh, the, through the devil, <laughs> through the desert, whoops, <laughs> Freudian slip there, right? Um, and then there's Noah went through the seas, the 40 days, they were lost in the, um, in the desert for 40 days. And then even you think outside of the Bible, in our own lives, the gestation period for a baby being born is 40 weeks. I just learned that the other day. I was like, oh. And they say personal and rain, the biblical flood lasted for 40 days. But many traditions recognize 40 days as a time for inner reflection growth and change for personal practices. 
Now I know they've, I've always heard the 21 days to create a new habit, but they're saying to solidify that practice, the 40 days makes that spiritual discipline. So if you commit to a practice such as meditation, fasting, well, I wouldn't include fasting for 40 days, but maybe if you're practiced at that, or self-improvement, 40 days will deepen that connection to the divine within. So that practice of 40 days, I wanted to start it right after Jill and Diane, they're doing their prayer workshop, because that gives you a chance to learn how to do it. And then what we're going to do for 40 days is you're going to write your own prayers. This is a free class. I just want everyone to start getting involved with prayer because it can shift lives so amazingly. And it is such a basis for our teaching. So what I'm thinking of doing, and we'll have our first meeting April 15th, and we'll talk about how we want to set up the structure. But what I'm going to encourage is that everybody works with one prayer for 10 days. And then from there, and then we'll meet up every couple of days to do that. Because one thing Ernest Holmes said too, is that yes, we do prayer and we think, oh, it should work automatically. It's not necessarily like that all the time. Sometimes he said he stayed up all night and prayed with people for healing. So it's working with our prayer until the prayer works. So it's not always just having to change it, but it's maybe that commitment to the prayer, that commitment to what you really believe in and what is it that you're asking for that source underneath. So practice, 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 practice prayer. And the other thing I would say is contemplation and meditation is the other main practice that we talk about here in Science of Mind. Now, you probably remember, I guess that was three weeks ago that Reverend Terry was here, and he talked about being in spiritual community. What is it that we're here in spiritual community for? But it's that place to practice, that we are here in a group of people that are all, I don't want to say like-minded, because we all have our own vision of life and the way that spirit shows up for us, but yet it's a place that we know that we're accepting and that you're not going to be judged for doing something different, maybe, that other people might not know about. So there is contemplation, meditation. The other piece is being in service. Being in service is a great opportunity to welcome people to, it doesn't necessarily have to be here at the center, wherever you're in service that fills you up, that brings you joy. That could even be your own work. You know, what a better way of doing the work in the world that you're in service to others and how it brings you through. And the last one that Reverend Terry talked about that day was giving. Those, so those are, well, I guess there's five main ones. So on the fear of putting you all to sleep, let's not go back to sleep. <laughs> and let's think of ways that we can encourage ourselves to work through it. And to work, I'm just looking for a story here that I wanted to share. Because spiritual practice and whatever, say, one of those main forms are for you, is a form of spiritual practice merely exists to help you save time, they invite you to the experience of unconditional love and grace right here, right now. They invite you to stop doing, to stop thinking, to stop scheming and dreaming. They invite you into the silent communion within yourself. They invite you to see every person's thoughts and actions toward you as a mirror of your own thoughts about yourself. So spiritual practice is always something to lean into. And when you answer this call, it is to enter the path. It does not matter what you call it. It does not matter how you express it. The way of giving will open up before you. And as you give, you will receive from others. The path has its own simple beauty and its own mystery. It's never what you think it is, yet it is never beyond your own ability to intuit the next step. Whatever is done must always come from deep within inside. 
So question, does anybody had a birthday today? You do? Yay, happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. So I have this book here. Do you want to maybe just pass that back? Is how to use the science of mind. Since I figured I'm talking about practice, well, do get people to use the practice. So then, too, as we're moving through, we have our practice, and then we move through the layers of the onion. So Vladimir Horowitz, one of the greatest pianists of the 20th century, suffered such agonizing stage fright before every public performance that he retired completely from the stage and turned only to studio recordings for decades during his career. He must have known the greatness of his gift, yet in those moments pre-concerts, other thoughts, feelings apparently held sway. So in our own lives, we may find that moment, our day, that we fully embody in ownership of truth, knowing divine love lives in, through, and as us. And as next, we're immersed in our constructs of letting go of those old ways of thinking and not who we are and what we are. So it's getting rid of those old stories. We talked about that before, letting them go. And it's remembering the truth of really who we are and how it is. So Ernest Holmes, he attested to the value of periodic intentional reset, reboot, and refresh. He once explained, I think a certain amount of meditation, prayer, contemplation reaches that secret place of the most high. He goes, believe me, I tried it last week because I felt I had some things I had to get straightened up. And he said, I went away for six days by myself and I talked to myself on an average of 10 hours a day. And he said, because I knew I needed it. <laughs> I loved it. And then he said, it happened. And you're wondering now what happened? Well, there is nothing that could have happened other than the frustration was removed long enough for some light to come through. The frustration was removed long enough for some light to come through. There is a light that lighteth every person's path. There is a word that is heard. There is a presence that is felt. There is a power that flows and a peace. It comes out of some eternal stillness, so still that the silence becomes articulate. The silence becomes articulate. He goes, now I know it because whatever I get to where I think I need it, that's what I do. And then he said, now what happens? I think in a sense, it's like boring a tunnel until it hits the reservoir and a clearance is made and out of that tunnel gushes the water as Moses struck the rock with a rod because water is always there. So it's opening up to ourselves that we're always there and it's available to us. So it's up to us to invite and commit to this new and now. It's up to us to make a change. So I know this morning, I knew y yesterday, Friday I was feeling anxious, yesterday feeling anxious, and then I'm like, okay, Tamara, what are you doing about it? Like, okay, are you walking in this talk or are you just going blah, blah, blah? So I sat down and did my meditation. And it, the difference today that I'm feeling already, it's already starting to lower. It's already starting to change. Because believe it or not, I don't necessarily like public speaking. <laughs> I know that may come as a shock to all of you, but it's true. The thing is, so I do have to work myself up to it. So, but it's that reminder. So I think what I'm going to ask you to do for homework this week is set a daily alarm on your, or an appointment on your calendar to dedicate a short break. Don't start with 20, 30, 40 minutes if you haven't done it before. If you have, maybe that's where you'll be. But even see if you can take five minutes and stretch and then start to stretch it. Treat it with the same diligence as you would an important meeting with a friend or colleague and see what happens to your energy level or your mental emotional balance and clarity. So let's not go back to sleep. 
The breeze at dawn has a secret to tell us. Don't go back to sleep. You must ask for what you really want. Don't go back to sleep. People are going back and forth across the door sills where the two worlds touch. But the door is round and open. Don't go back to sleep. So ends the lesson. And I'll take us into prayer. So today is the day that I know there is one divine source, that inspiration that is operating right here, right now. As we take this moment and connect with that upswelling wisdom that is within, knowing that each person here and listening online knows that life is ever unfolding. It is always perfection. We let go of our fear. We let go of all those old stories that no longer serve us. Today is a new day. So today, claiming the love that each of you are, claiming the joy, claiming the new birthing like spring that is coming forth through this time, claiming the love and joy of time together. I know that today is ever unfolding in perfection, in love and joy. So I let these words go into that law of mind with gratitude. My heart is full, full to the brim. I love it that life is that endless possibility. So today I claim it for myself and I claim it for all of you as these words will come back to us in a demonstration. I let it be, I let it go and ask you to join me in saying, and so it is. <laughs>